um, I just want to say thank you for those of you that are still following me after all this time. I appreciate it. I kind of want to get back into this and kind of post more videos religiously. Sorry, that's my cat. And if you're new to this channel, um, hi, I'm Emily and I have a three-month-old daughter and I also have a almost two-year-old daughter. I'm gonna catch you guys up on what's been going on. I got married like six months ago. It was a very nice wedding, but I was about six or seven months pregnant and I was miserable. It was about 98 degrees that day and the heat index was like 100 something. We adopted a new cat. His name's Rico. His full name is actually Rico Rodriguez. Hopefully this coming up summer we'll be able to um, either rent or buy his parents' house that he grew up in. Um, I think it'd be really amazing to raise our children in that house with all the memories that John and I have made and the memories that he's made growing up. I think the last time I posted an update with you guys was when I got my pregnancy test. Um, I got a positive. I posted a video with Jaina. I'm kind of like telling you guys what was going on and everything. I am not pregnant anymore. She was due November 20th of this year and I had her at 32 weeks, zero days, gestational age. And she was born September 25th of this year at 6.14 in the morning and labor progressed very fast. In this video, I kind of want to tell you guys um, what kind of like the warning signs are of premature labor, what to look out for, some tips and tricks on how to kind of get through it and coax yourself through it and stay mentally strong. It definitely was like a hard battle and it was like a roller coaster and I just really want to help other moms that are going to be going through it or you know could be going through it or what to look out for. I just I don't know I thought this video would be helpful. Because 31 weeks and something days, I think it was like three days, um, I started to have some spotting and it wasn't from anything that I was doing. Like I know you could spot from like intercourse and stuff like that. It was quite a bit of blood and I was a little nervous. So what I did was I called my OB if you ever think that you're going into premature labor, anything through 20 weeks and up is a viable, um, well actually like more it's like 23 weeks to 24 weeks now, um, is a viable pregnancy. The OB on call is always there um, to help you and you definitely want to take advantage of that if you ever think that, you know, um, you might be experiencing contractions, but maybe they're Braxton Hicks, or you know, maybe your water broke, or maybe you just beat yourself. You know, you want to get it checked out. <laughs> I was possibly going into labor or not. I thought, you know, maybe I was just bleeding because you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I thought. I just didn't believe it. My first, I went overdue. I was 41 weeks and three days and had to be induced. And I really was not expecting to have a premature baby at all. I really wish I had more time to kind of discuss this with my doctor and kind of like look out for the warning signs because I literally had like no idea. It was, this experience was so different from my first with my overdue baby. So after I called my OB and um, I felt like I was having contractions, I was advised to go to labor and delivery and when I got there they hooked me up to the machines and baby's heartbeat was good um, I was having contractions and they were frequent and they were definitely contractions if you don't know anything over 30 seconds is considered a real contraction if it's Braxton Hicks it'll vary in length and in intensity and you definitely want to go be seen if you are having more than five contractions in an hour because that could be a sign of labor. If you drink water, it can help kind of like relax your uterine muscles. Um, and that's how you can kind of tell if it's real or not because if you're just dehydrated and your muscles are just contracting, um, it's different from if you were actually in labor. You can also try to lay on your side for 30 minutes. Um, your 
preferably your left side because baby will get more um, kind of like uh, blood flow and all that kind of stuff and it's I don't know I've just been told that the left side is basically better for um, like the baby's umbilical blood flow like rest for like 30 minutes to an hour if you're kind of like teetering on the edge of you know maybe it's just you know Braxton Hicks or maybe it's preterm labor but I definitely wouldn't wait longer than an hour to call your OB if you think that you may be having contractions at like you know 23 24 weeks and up um, anything under 37 weeks is considered premature um, labor and gestational age for me I was sent to my local hospital I went there um, I was there after they had me on the monitors for a couple hours my contractions were kind of you know staying at a consistent rate they gave me IV fluids to help me um, be hydrated and they checked me a couple times and I was at about a one one and a half and then I was a two two or three so they told me that I was gonna have to start magnesium Magnesium helps the baby's brain development, so if the baby is born early, it's more likely that they won't have brain bleeds and all that kind of stuff. I absolutely hated magnesium, but it's something you have to do. It makes you feel like you have the flu, and it really just like brings out the worst in you. I was having like hot flashes, I was sweating, I was shaking, and you have to get the bolus first and I believe that's like up to 20 minutes. I could be wrong, I don't really remember. And then you get like a smaller dose over like a smaller amount of time. They typically give that to you um, before you deliver about like 24 hours I believe so that um, the effects will be like they'll have a greater effect basically. I was transported to Albany Med and um, that was quite a ride. I was very tired and just wanted to sleep and go home and be in the comfort of my own home but I really couldn't and I just kept having to tell myself you know like this is for the baby like I have to get through it and you know if I do go into late like full-blown labor and I have the baby then at least I'm in a hospital that has a great NICU. They said, okay, you're in labor, we're going to give you steroid shots, and you have to get two doses of steroid shots, and that helps um, to mature the baby's lungs so that it's less likely that they'll have like chronic lung disease when they're born and all that kind of stuff. So um, they put it in your, like, kind of like your butt cheek <laughs> and it's like the thickest medicine I've ever seen. It reminded me of like kind of like a jelly-like substance. It was terrible. So once I got that, I ended up over the course of a couple days going from in labor to not really in labor but then going into active labor and then kind of progressing, but then not really progressing, like, um, effacement-wise and dilation-wise. And they really didn't want to send me home because they were kind of afraid that, you know, like, something could happen and I live an hour away. So, um, if I had her at the hospital that was local to me, then I would have been separated from her because she would have had to go an hour away to the um, hospital that had a specialized NICU for babies born at 32 weeks. After I got those shots, sorry if I'm kind of like bouncing around, I'm just trying to remember it was like three months ago and it was such a traumatic experience I really tried to just kind of suppress it back in my head. I mean I'm in counseling now to kind of like talk about it because it really is a traumatizing experience and I just feel like I have PTSD from it. It was such a terrible experience. A day and a half away from 32 weeks, my water ended up um, breaking. And what they wanted to do was they wanted to keep me in the hospital until 34 weeks and then try to deliver. 
Um, so I know that sounds really crazy because I was like, what do you mean you're going to make me wait until 34 weeks? Like, the baby doesn't have amni amniotic fluid in there. Like, I don't know, I just didn't think that the baby would survive. I guess what happens is the baby will keep producing amniotic fluid and it'll pee it out and it'll fall out as it goes and it consumes it and it's just really weird to think about. It was definitely a different feeling when my water broke. She dropped lower, there was a lot more pressure. That's another sign if you're having pressure, if you're having intense back pain, um, kind of like period type cramps. Like I almost felt like I was, I don't know how to explain it, like I had a gut feeling towards the end of my hospital stay. Um, when my water broke that like I was not going to make it to 34 weeks because I was in prodermal labor and active labor and then like I wasn't and so I just kept going back and forth and I just had a gut feeling that it was just going to happen and you know she was going to be born. Times from switching to like the postnatal um, area to the delivery area um, I was exhausted and it was like time to go to bed. I had just switched rooms. My roommate was crazy. She was talking to herself and like she was just very loud and she was about 30 weeks pregnant and her blood pressure was very high. It was like well over 140 and like she just did not think it was a big deal. She wanted to go home and she had just lost a baby less than a year ago to the same issue and I just thought she was crazy and I just wanted to get out of there so um, my nurse offered for me to transfer to my own room so I did that. Once I did that I was trying to lay down and get comfortable. It was probably around 9 p.m. John was sleeping in the chair next to me and um, I was just having really bad back pain and it felt like back labor and I knew that she was kind of like facing sunny side up so basically she wasn't facing my back she was facing up and when you that happens skull will press up against my spine and stuff and that's what causes back labor so I did not have that with my first and it was very intense and I kept telling the doctors like I'm in labor this is for real now, this is actually happening, and there's no turning back. And they checked me, and I was at a six, and then they said that they would check me again in an hour. So I was telling them an hour later that, you know, I was still having the urge to, like, push, and I was for sure that I was in labor, and they checked me again, and I was about a seven to an eight, they took me to the delivery um, part of the unit and I got my epidural finally. <laughs> I wanted to go natural but I just could not deal with the back labor and just from the stress of it all, um, knowing that I was going to have a premature baby and I was not going to go home with her and knowing that I just went through a week of on and off active labor, I was just done and ready to just have her. After I got my epidural, I relaxed for probably less than an hour and then I told them that I felt like I had to push and I feel like the epidural didn't even really have a chance to fully get in my system and kind of like work its magic. By the time the doctors came in, they were checking me, they said, yeah, you're at a 10, we're gonna have a baby, so they had me do some practice pushing and they told me to stop because she was basically like flying out of me and they didn't want me to have a baby right then and there without the NICU team. And I pushed for four minutes. I probably did like one or two pushes and she like was there and she did like the littlest cry and she was so cute. Mm. Good. Mm. There she is. Is she a brown hair? Yeah. Looks a little brown, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I am just very thankful that I was in a hospital that could provide me the care that myself and my daughter needed.
I didn't get to latch her on the breast right away. I didn't get to do skin to skin, but I was able to hold her for a few seconds and take a picture with her and John. And those couple seconds that I got with her was very magical and I'm very thankful that she did not come out and had like too many problems where she had to be immediately transported to the NICU. That's kind of like my premature labor delivery story. I mean, I hope this video kind of helps someone that's maybe searching for some answers on, you know, am I in labor or not, and you kind of have the time to watch it. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe below. And if you're interested in following life through um, pictures, follow my Instagram link below. I have not posted in a while, but I promise to kind of get more into posting religiously. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye guys.